explain what you did. Don't put me on, Marlon. You put your own makeup on today. I did, but I wanted to look exactly like you. And uh, this was your goal. This is my goal. And, and you I, believe? I wore some red suspenders in your honor. Oh my God! I did everything I could, and then I I received some criticism from these people. Thing. They they wanted to do you themselves. They wanted to do it. Themselves. Well, I'm honored. Do you, do you see my eyebrows that dark in that way and that kind of yes, dark look? That yes, way? a little of the uh, what do you call it? Who's that guy? The famous Italian guy, not Raymond Navarro, but the other guy. Oh, the big lover. What was his name? Played the Sheik. Oh, uh, Valentino. Yeah. That's Valentino. the look you have. That's right. Why? Let's well, I want to touch a lot of bases with you. It's not easy to get to. Why don't you like interviews? Uh, well, primarily because the interest is in money. That's the principal guiding feature of all interviews today, is money. What do you mean? You know perfectly well what I mean. No. You know that a story has uh, the one story is more valuable than another because of the readership for instance oj simpson has taken over the air which is sweating a little uh oj simpson has taken over the air what are you smiling at i'm sorry because she's pointed out that i was sweating i'm jewish i sweat you're part yiddish you understand okay and that's money so you say that the camera go no, it's been forced because it's uh, market forces that determine that. There are a lot of guys like Izzy Stone. You remember Izzy Stone? Wonderful. I have Stone. Uh, uh, Fred Friendly, who's still alive, who still is throwing punches, still going uh, three rounds. But all. the question was, why don't you like being interviewed? Because I don't like the idea of uh, selling yourself for money. I... I uh, so you don't like selling a book, right? You don't like to go on to sell a book or I don't. sell a movie. I don't. I've never sold a movie, and this is the first time I've ever been on uh, beating the drum for some product. In this case, it's Random House's uh, book. Because you promised them you would do one? It was uh, unbeknownst to me. It was part of the contract. And uh, if I didn't, I would be... But uh, I would be in breach of contract. But aside from that, I've had pleasure talking to you. I'm fascinated with people, especially the kind of people I wouldn't lump you with others because you are exceptional, because there are many people who have asked me to be on programs and I've refused. But you, without flattery, I, mean, I have nothing to gain. You have uh, impressed, I think, all people, and certainly me, as being very forthright, sincere, and direct. And, uh, well, I thank you very much. Now the subject is you. Why? No, not necessarily. Yeah, but in this situation. Because the audience really would like to know what it is that makes Larry King. Okay. Well, one King. night, we'll have Marlon Brando live. You'll host it. I'll guess. That's this night. No, this night, you're the guest. Somebody laughed a little bit. <laughs> Why did you choose acting as a career? Why did you choose to be other people? Uh, let me, I think I, it's uh, useful to make uh, an observation about that that uh, everybody here in this room is an actor. You're an actor. And the best performances that I've ever seen is when the, the director says, cut. And the director says, that was great. That was wonderful. That was, uh, was good. He said, there was a few, we had a little lighting problem. Let's, let's do it again. What he's thinking is, Jesus Christ, that's so funny. Excuse me. <laughs> it's, uh, that's, it's it, it wasn't done well, so we've got to do it over. But everybody tries to handle. When you say, how do you do, how are you, you look fine, you, you're doing two things at once. You're reading the person's real intention. Mm -hmm. You're trying to feel who he is and making an assessment and trying to to uh, so the director ignore, when, ignore the mythology. So when the director says cut, but I didn't like the lighting, he's acting. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about going to the office and saying, good morning, uh, I know, Mr. But, Harrison. But we're all acting. And we're all acting. But why did you and choose it? And it's natural. What? You chose it as a profession. Because there isn't anything that pays you as much money as acting while you are deciding what the hell you're going to do. <laughs> so wait a minute. Are you saying I mean, you're still deciding? It took me a long time to decide. You know, people have never decided. I mean, most people, if they, if you ask them what their dreams are, mm -hmm. give this guy. I'll minutes. get tissue in a while. Go ahead. I sweat. We got, we got hot lights here. No, we don't. I'm not sweating. Right, well, you're Marlon Brando. I'm Larry King. I sweat. <laughs>
You're doing that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> why are you sweating? I don't know. No, no, let's get, I, want, I don't want to get off. Why do you escape trying to make the one-to-one contact okay, here? Because, because I'm I, the product? Yeah, you're the product. Right. Okay, so then my, you answered my first question. But this is question. about money, then. This okay. is about money. But it's also about interest if and I learning. If I was uh, Joe Schlepp, I don't think I'd be sitting here, even though you might like me. Even though we went for a taxi ride, and I was a very interesting guy. I don't know that I would appear in your program. You are correct. And uh, but because, you've attained because something. of market values. But you've attained something that people are interested in. That's why there's a market value. That's why they pay you the money to do the film. Yes, precisely. Okay. So when Brando goes up on the screen or on the marquee, people will come to see the movie. That's money. That's and brings right. money to you. It's market forces. Okay. That's the way it works. But if, you, if you don't carry the mail, you don't get arrested. Right. Did it come easily to you? So in other words, you could make money this way? Acting comes easily to everybody. All I've done is just simply through the extraordinary talents of... Uh, uh, Stella Adler, who was my teacher and mentor, learned how to be aware of the process. And uh, some people are never, never aware of it. And professionally, uh, or no, she taught in you, life. In or she life. taught you how to what impersonate? No, how to be aware of my own feelings and how to access my own feelings. Uh, many actors can do that. I'm sure you've seen in pictures of uh, actors that, uh, I mean, you've seen a performance of an actor who really gave his all. And he was, he was very effective, but he was ugly. He was ugly in the expression of his emotion. Or he was truly being himself, but what he was was boring. Or was uh, dull, or was right. something. So she taught you to take that inner self of you, of you, and bring it to a waterfront, or I'm a godfather, sure. or whatever. I'm not sure what she taught me. I would, we'd all like to be certain of what we know, but I think the most important question is to ask yourself: Do you really know what you know? Okay, help me with something because it's fascinating. Let's say you get a, a role; it's the Godfather. Yeah. You're not a mafia kingpin. Yes, you're, I am. Who are you? No, no, you're not a mafia. Yeah. Uh, well, it, as a matter of fact, I'm not. Okay. But we are. There isn't anything that you are or that you feel or that you have that I don't feel or that I don't have. And so you can bring it into someone. You can ask an actor, well, say, well here, this is where you get, you get hit with a, a crowbar in the head and... Uh, you uh, get a brain concussion, you're lying there, and you're, uh, you're mumbling. Well, I mumble anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, so are you but saying anyone can do that? No. Any, nobody can die, so you have to pretend you're dying. Okay. Are you saying that when you are the godfather, you're pretending? Uh, sure. I'm pretending. Okay. But you're in I mean, it, it, we're going to get lost in vocabulary. No, we're not. We're, we're, we're learning what you're doing. What do you do? Do you do you read? The, you read the script. You like it. Well, what's by the way? What's how I you usually read the script and hate it. You usually hate, but you didn't hate the Godfather, right? Uh, no, I liked the. I wasn't sure that I could do it, uh, and uh, Francis, uh, fortunately, uh, asked me if I would do a uh, uh, test. Yeah, a test, which I, I, I wasn't, I would never play a part that I couldn't do. And uh, somebody play, asked me to play Hamlet tomorrow with Jesus Christ playing uh, Mary Magdalene. I wouldn't do it. Well, have you um, turned down anything you regretted? That I regretted? No. No. Ever taken anything you regretted? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, God. Taken anything out? You mean swipe stuff? No, no, no. Played a role. You, God, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. A lot of them? Uh, no, regretted, no. I don't think, I think this, it, it, the regret is useless in life. It belongs to the past. The only moment we have is right now, sitting here and talking with each other. You can't see my feet, can you? I forgot to put my shoes on. Okay, that's all right. Uh, that's all right. Uh, 
This, you're, that's a, this is the moment. We'll come back with more of these moments, okay? I'll take a break. Okay. And make money. All right. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Back to movies, and we'll touch a lot of base. I want to talk about the environment, Tahiti, the causes you get involved in. I'm so, glad you said that so we can get off the movie. I know, but, I'm, but there are certain things I want to uh, just to take world. me back. Oh, yeah, Do you ever shoes. miss theater? Uh, only when I'm going around 47th Street, about 80 miles an hour in a cab. And I, when you say you'd like to be inside? No, the... I passed by the Alvin and almost hit it. That's when I. The only you, time you, I have, you do it. not miss being on a stage. You no, know, God Why no. Not? Because it's three hours of blood, sweat, and tears every night. There's nothing to do but blah 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 blah. Oh, don't and diminish that. What? Audience, you. I don't diminish Shakespeare. I can recite Shakespeare from morning till night till I put you to sleep. I love Shakespeare, but I don't like, I'm not nuts about going to the theater. So often uh, in the past, I've gone to the theater and been so bored. How about working in it, though? I mean, first of all, you get applause. For? The, applause. Who cares about applause? If I get applause from my dog, if I get applause from my children, that's enough. God, do I have to turn to an applause junkie in order to feel good about myself? When you start out, you do you need applause? Did you realize even at this young age, I am doing acting because I can do it, but you I want talking to, about Yiddish. But I want to do other things. What? But did you realize it then that I I, do I, I wanted to? I studied for a while to be a dancer at Catherine Dunham's School of Dance. And uh, I formerly had been a trap drummer, a stick drummer. And uh, I thought I was encapsulated in uh, Puerto Rican uh, uh, music. Would you rather have been a musician? I don't know. If the dog hadn't stopped to pee, he might have caught the rabbit. <laughs> How could I possibly know? Well, well, because you know if you love it. What? I'll do it right now. Oh, you're going to? Oh. Marlon has a way to stop sweat. I have, I have a way the of, that, Larry, that Larry doesn't know about of, of taking sweat off your brow. What do you do? Just leave it there. And it'll, it'll yeah, but how does this look? What? It looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So take a look at the camera. Two more things on acting, and then I want to touch on the base, but on okay. acting. So acting is the most important thing in the world because... We all do it. We all do it, and we do it for a reason. For a sociological, it serves a sociological purpose. And when you think of it, it's it's an absurd process, because I go and I pretend that I've got a hole in my leg, and because I'm limping on one side, this girl won't fall in love with me, and her grandmother is trying to arrange a marriage, some crazy thing. And people go to a dark room and pay money to see somebody pretend that they've got a hole in their leg. Right, now you're making light of it. But in I'm not making pretending light of it you've got the hole in the because leg. Because it is a fundamental process. It's older than whoring. It's older than being a whore. Well, let me get a you, break. We'll come back with Marlon Brando. There's lots of other things to no, talk I'm about. No, I'm leaving now. It doesn't matter what he's saying. No, and we're, we're going to take phone calls. You love Don Rickles, right? Tell him. I he, love Don Rickles. He, he loves Don, Don Rickles. I want to know how it is that you comb your hair with a wash right so successfully. We'll be right, terrific. We'll be right back with Mr. B. Don't go away. Right, Tahiti. Tahiti, uh, one thing that has been very problematic about being an actor and getting some measure of celebrity uh, is the fact that you lose your identity and uh, everybody calls you instantly Mr. Brando instead of hey you and uh, then people make up notions they want your autograph and I used to shovel manure from horses and cows for a living I milk cows I have uh, done some really and I've done ditches Real digits for Malcolm Ball's father in Libertyville, Illinois. And uh, I put in, I was an elevator boy at Best and Company, and I was a short order cook for a while, and a sandwich man, and a waiter. Right, and then you got famous and rich. And then your life changes. 
you don't change, but suddenly there's a lot more girls saying, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good, ain't it? Uh, I used to think it was good until I, it took me a while to realize that it was just part of the game. And I always wanted to be liked for myself, known for myself. So anyway, long story so short, Tahiti. I went to Tahiti where they don't give a damn who you are. The Tahitians are marvelously free. First of all, it's a classless society. And if you put on airs, they just tease the life out of you. And, so ego uh, don't work there. What? Ego don't work there. Doesn't work there. Well, ego works, but not for long, because they tease you so much that uh, you have to uh, you get rid of it pretty good. What has fame done to you, if anything? It's made me feel kind of isolated and uh, and a little alone. It's but the, but the society I know and trust are the people that I have known for a long time and loved. Are you happier now? And I, I'm happy now. Most of the time, I'm happy. I have a few blips now and then, but it took me a long time to hit my stride. Were you ever uh, <clears throat> what might be termed depressed? Uh, no. I was never depressed. Were, was, you, were you ever... I had, I had trouble Mood with, swings? What? Mood swings? No, it uh, wasn't mood swings. I was... Uh, I think that I was mostly uh, an angry uh, At guy. your childhood? A quick temper, quick to fight. And uh, I had a bad... Uh, you had a tough childhood, up, right? right? You had a tough childhood. Well, it's all relative. Uh, there's some guys, one of my very closest friends was Jimmy Baldwin, who was a black kid who was brought up in the Amen corner. And uh, I met him when I was 18. And we were instant friends. <clears throat> and uh, he had I, it tougher than you. He, well, first of all, he was uh, black, which is tough to grow up in this country. Secondly, he uh, uh, he was dominated by uh, uh, his father, who was not such a wonderful man, according to what he told me. And uh, he wanted to be a writer, which at that time was a very, very, there weren't any black writers. He was one of the first black writers that we that we had that achieved popular so when you say it's relative you can look at Baldwin and say I had it better than he did I can look at him and say uh, maybe he had something to to uh, he had a capacity to deal with life I know people who have it worse than I have uh, but does that make it world. easier for you because they had it worse what does that make it easier for you because they had it worse it's all relative it's very, very difficult to say when somebody is brave or when somebody is, uh, uh, let's say, cowardly. Because uh, what might be a brave choice for you, for another person, is just, they just simply don't experience fear. Okay. So the anger, anything. did you use that anger ever on a pro sense, you know, as anger is not a very good thing to have. Did you ever use it, say, in your career to your benefit? Well, I suppose, uh, you know, when you're acting, you have to be angry at something. Uh, you think of something that makes you... Fine. Right. What changed you? What diminished the anger? Pain. Uh, I knew I had to deal with it, and I had to find out why I was angry, as we all do. And as opposed to you, from what we've said before, I believe that unless we look inwards, we will not ever be able to clearly see outwards. We were talking before we went on the air that I have a difficult time looking inwards, and Marlon was kind of analyzing this. You can look inward, right? Uh, I have the sense can. that I can. In any event, the total result is that I have felt much calmer and... Uh, and, and I've had moments of real tranquility since I just put a break on everything and, uh, and just, I've done a lot of meditation. And professional help too? I was uh, uselessly psychoanalyzed and uh, exploited by a psychoanalyst, or maybe sometimes sincerely, I don't want to uh, degrade their intentions, but 
they make a lot of money getting you five days a week to lie down and say, uh, I understand that your mother uh, used to like to pinch your black ass. What does that mean to you? <laughs> and uh, So what did you use the man who I do want to okay. say, uh, is uh, was named G.L. Harrington. And he was like my father. And I thought, yeah, Christ, we're going to end up in fisticuffs because he was a really tough guy and he spoke like that and he was... You know, he had a lot of male hormones, and he shook your hand, and he crushed it. And I thought, uh, uh, wait a minute, why is this nobody going to work out? In any event, he was wonderful. He laughed me out of a lot of trouble. What are you looking at? You watch I, do, I just want to check this. I, got, I don't have a clock here, so I'm checking times. Uh, okay. There's a lot of base I want to cover. Time goes so fast with you. For someone who doesn't do interviews, you're a great interview subject. Oh. So I'm, I just thought I'd pass that along to you. Thank you. Let's take some calls for Marlon Brando, uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Hello. Hello, Mr. Brando? Yeah. Hi, I just wanted to ask you, considering that you are what very... What is your name, please? Natalia. 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 Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, go on, Marlon. Go ahead, Natalia. <laughs> okay, um, considering that you're a very private person, why after so many years of obscurity of refusing to be in the spotlight, have you decided to publish your autobiography? I think that you uh, uh, have misunderstood something. I wouldn't be on that program, on this program. Somebody in Louisiana, a woman, I don't know who she was, said anybody who shows his face in public is uh, an ass. And uh, perhaps that's true by some standards. In any event, fate has brought me to this moment. And, oh, just, uh, the question was, why did a private person write an autobiography? Oh, I was just explaining to Larry that the reason that I wrote it was it was an exercise in freedom. I want to be able to say to you or to Larry or to myself anything that I believe to be true. And it's a very, very difficult thing to do to go through life. And one of the things that uh, in this culture, money is everything. Money is God. Money is uh, our religion. And it determines everything that we do. And uh, also... Uh, so they the, paid you to do what? They paid you to do the book. They paid me $5 million to write the story of my life, but I decided to do it before. And But you were doing all the things for nothing. You did a movie for nothing, right? I did uh, the last... Next to the last movie I did for nothing. Yeah. Let me take another uh, call. So Zurich, Switzerland. Hello. This is Sammy from Zurich. Uh, it's fascinating to talk to two legends at the same time. Two legends at the same time, Sammy from bon, Zurich. Uh, bonsoir, monsieur. <laughs> yes, uh, Larry, uh, I'm sure that all the free thinkers in the world would agree with me that you deserve a Nobel Prize of your own. For what? Elective one. I'm sorry, I, I could, I, I'm not sure when I could be in the air again, so I had to... You have it. a question for me. Yes. Uh, Mr. Brando, uh, you had a political and social agenda sometimes. You defended the American Indians, for example. Yes. You, you were an inspiration for us when we were in the best boarding school in Egypt at times, too. Very have you ever considered uh, a political question? career in your life? Like I don't want to run for office. Thank you, sir. Yes, Larry has cut you off. Well, he got, he he got just, to his point, and I'm moving yes, along. Okay. I didn't cut him yes. off. I, yeah, uh, I, cut him off. I was in support of the Indians uh, in America, who I think America has reduced. 400 treaties, read them. 400 treaties have been broken by the United States government. If one time Cuba said, I'm sorry, we don't recognize the Treaty of Guantanamo, they'd have the Marines in there in eight yes. seconds. They'd bomb Havana flat. They'd make a parking lot, a lot out of it. Why is it that we cannot give, one third of America is owned by uh, the US government. The blacks in this country have struggled, have fought, have died have, of misery and broken hearts perfectly and wonderfully uh, documented in the best writer of the world, in my uh, estimation, Toni Morrison, uh, in her books. And uh, I think they should be read everywhere in the world to have a sense. Don't look at your watch. I know, i got to get a break. I'm, I, I, hey, we're, we're going to do more of this. We just touched the surface. Anyway, uh, 
But have so, you ever wanted to run for office? I want to run from office. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with some Thank more you. moments with Marlon Brando. By the way, there's nothing in this house, in this wonderful house, that says you're an actor. Okay? There's no, there's no uh, theater billboards. There's no movie cutouts. There's no Oscar. Where's your Oscar? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know where your Oscar is? I think my secretary has it. Uh, George C. Scott. I know one guy that has it, but uh, George C. Scott said that he doesn't want to ever compete because he thinks competition among actors is wrong I unless all of them play the I same think, part. Originally, I think that the Academy Awards was uh, was determined because of, or rather, it was put together by some very cogent. Uh, businessmen who thought that they would improve their product if they gave, they had a gala and all of that stuff. And that was when Hedda Hopper and uh, what's the, the fat one? Luella Parsons. Luella Parsons were running the show. And uh, it came out of that. And now it, uh, people take it very seriously. And, uh, Do you? No, I don't believe in any kind of award. Uh, and no matter what it is, because and I don't believe in any kind of censure. No censure, no awards. No, no awards. Why? Uh, because I don't think that I'm any better than the camera operator, uh, the boom man. Uh, I don't think that I'm any better than you are. But in your and profession, I don't think that they're better than, than I am. They all have their personal, intimate. Uh, so in a, in a Brando world, there would be no Emmys or Tonys or award shows. In a Brando world? A Brando? No, that's hard to envision that. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I suppose if I were king of the world. <laughs> okay. Do you I mean, want? By the way, did you want good reviews? I never read reviews. You know, people say that. That's really true. You never read. You wouldn't say. If I said to you, Marlon, I have read reviews. The Washington yeah. Post tomorrow gives reviews. you a Generally, rate. I don't. And I don't see the movie. Anybody can tell you that I didn't see The Russian, and I haven't seen this movie. That I did. And, uh, when a movie comes on of yours, like tonight, if it's playing on television, will you watch it? It all depends on the movie. Some are bored the hell on me. What movie would you definitely watch? What would you say? This is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> the yeah. dog. This, what movie would you say? This is good work. <laughs> Bring him in. Uh, He's got a dog you wouldn't friend. believe. What? What movie would you say, yes, this is good work? Uh, I've tried hard in a movie called Burn. Burn? Burn. It was, uh, it was a movie about slavery and uh, a slave rebellion. Come here, Tim. Tim, I want you to meet my friend. Tim, Tim, come here. Tim, over here, right here. Here. This is Tim. Look at this. Now sit down like a good boy. Now shake hands with Larry. Shake hands. That up, boy. Way to go, Jim. Now. Good. Isn't that good? This is what kind of breed? This is a Mastiff. How heavy is Tim? Tim is 180 here. Tim. I'm not going to eat Tim's food. No, I don't want you to eat it. I want you to just oh, feed it. Put it in your mouth like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's a film that'll be released in January. Uh, no, just Brando, say, Johnny Depp. I, I just wanted to say that Don that Juan now, DeMarco. Now we're, we're back. No, no, don't talk about that. Larry is too quick off the uh, off the cuff. You, there we are. Uh, I want to give. What, you, what, what kind of effect do you look for? I'll try to help you. Which camera? The close-up yeah. camera. Okay. Uh, Larry is uh, hogging the frank, and I wanted it. To, it didn't Seems speak. Still? I didn't finish the last okay, thing we were talking about. But you want to talk about Don Juan de Marco? Your new movie? Okay. Uh, no. Uh, we, we, I was, uh, I wanted to say that unless we get together, we're going to, we're going to fall apart. That we have to come together. That this, maybe we're 140 odd, 150 odd nations, but we're one planet. And uh, we have to find a way to live together without hatred. What goes on in the world is, uh, is uh, impossible. We have to address that. Now, apropos of that, one of the things that Carl is doing, this is Carl, uh, Caroline? Caroline? 
Okay, uh, will you give me the names? Oh, yes. I, I have uh, involved myself with a company called uh, uh, Planetary Design Corporation, which is a company that, uh, by unwritten charter, is designed to, to uh, reduce the CO2 in the Earth to preserve it for your grandchildren and for mine, which are not going to survive it if we don't pay attention to it. Each one of us, everybody here in this room, uh, sound, gaffers, uh, assistants, uh, whoever it is, uh, we all have to do something to reverse the effects of the CO2. We're now, sure on time. What will the company do? What? What's the company going to do? The company has already done what I've, mm -hmm. what I've showed sure, you. Sure has raised this plant called Sal called Salicornia, and uh, Man Manuel Arango, who is, uh, is very dedicated to environmental issues in Mexico, and he is teaching children to be aware of their environment. And uh, uh, I, I, I have a feeling that I'm, I'm rushing to get this information out, and, and well, you know what we'll it's have your to do. show. And no, I no, no, you know, know what we'll have to do. Crude, what? You were a terrific guest, if I do say humbly so myself. I know that you do. Will you come back? Thank you, Larry. You will do another session with me, and then I will do one with you. Okay. We'll go on the road with this. All right. Okay? <laughs> but I want to, uh, they're telling me let's close with a song. Let me just remind you, the book is Brando, Songs My Mother Taught Me from Random yeah, House. Harry, I hope I've done well by <laughs> Random Harry House and by well. you. And uh, <laughs> thank okay. you very well, much. Now, for your all, all I want to say. Treat away, you interrupt. Got a date with an angel. We're going to do Got a Date with an Angel. Okay, we let's get together for this. <laughs> the the right camera. All right, which one we do? Okay. okay. Bum, 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 bum. Got, Got a date, date with, with an angel. angel. You're up key. Going to be there at seven. seven. Got, Got a date, date with an angel. angel. I'm on my way, way to heaven. heaven. Got an angel beside me. Got a oh, whatever to guide me. Got a date with an angel. And I'm on my way to heaven. When the chapel bells ring out. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Darling. Goodbye. Goodbye. Marlon Brando. <laughs> See you tomorrow night with Sid Caesar, Carl Reiner, oh. Mel Brooks. Oh, I wish I was there. Alan Dershowitz Monday. Oh, Lauren sure. Bacall next week. Thanks for joining us. Say good night, Marlon. Good night. Don't forget Salicornia from the rest. Not even dirt.